Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to Wednesday Wisdom. This is a time in which we take a nugget of God's word and we try to apply it to our daily Christian walk so that we will have a very successful rest of the week. Amen. Amen. We want to get over hump Wednesday so that we can finish the week off with with power, with strength, and not be so worn out for the weekend. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, we've been going through this um this series, and the series we've been going through is called the five percenters, the five percent centers. That means, boys and girls, God wants us to be the very best we can in every aspect of our lives. We've been talking about being the top five percenters in our physical life, taking care of our physical bodies. We've been talking about being a part of the top five percent in our social lives, being careful as to who we hang with. And today, boys and girls, we are going to be talking about being the part of the top five percenters when it comes to our mental well-being. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, and then we're going to take it from there. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and the future that you hold for each of us. You said that you know the plans that you have for us, plans to pro prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future. And we look forward to each moment of our lives, dear Lord, as you continually just navigate us through this life on this earth, molding and shaping us into who you desire for us to be so that when we reach our destiny, you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Lord, bless this time that we have together. Bless these children, dear Lord, open up their hearts and their minds to receive your word. May it be like seed planted into their hearts that produces roots and bear much fruit. Lord, I pray that they put into practice what they've learned, dear Lord, and, and just try, just try to see how one Wonderful and powerful your word truly is by simply obeying your commands. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, now we can ready to begin the lesson. The title of the lesson or the title of the series is The Five Percenters. The Five Percenters. Boys and girls, it's God's desire that each of us be part of the top, the very best in every aspect of our lives, our physical lives, our social lives, our mental and our spiritual lives. And the only way for us to achieve such as that, boys and girls, is that we must set goals. Goals are something that we want to achieve or a destination that we want to arrive at. In other words, boys and girls, God has placed into each of our hearts something that he wants us to achieve. And with that in our heart and in our mind, that should be what guides us to navigate us, to lead us in all of the decisions in which we make so that we can little by little, step by step, eventually realize the ultimate goal that God has set before us to achieve. And that is what we call success, boys and girls. It's the progressive realization of a worthwhile ideal or a worthwhile goal. That means, boys and girls, we don't just set a goal and set it on the on the on the, on the on the shelf and just wait for some miracle to happen and it and it occurs. No, boys and girls, we set a goal, and then we put together what we call objectives. These are the steps that we are going to take to achieve that goal. And as we do so, we progressively get closer and closer to the realization of that worthwhile goal or that ideal that we had set in our hearts to achieve. That is what success is, boys and girls. And it could be in any part of your life. You can have great success by setting goals and then taking the necessary steps to achieve those goals. When you get into the habit of doing such as that and enjoying what you are doing, that is true success. Amen? Amen. So boys and girls, today we're going to talk about goals. The goals that we're going to talk about today is maintaining mental health. Yes, maintaining mental health. That means intellectually and emotionally maintaining our mind, maintaining our mind. And so, boys and girls, as I go through the four little steps here, I want you to understand that they are so important, not just in our spiritual world, but also in the world in which we are living in. Amen. Amen. I'll explain to that as we go along the way. First thing, boys and girls, as we go along 
in our intellectual world, we need to listen attentively. Listen and attentively. What that means, boys and girls, when you're in your classroom, you are not distracted by looking at other people or looking at the walls or whatnot or trying to get on your electronic device. You are paying attention to the teacher. You are paying attention to the teacher. And if you're doing so, boys and girls, that is going to give you what you need so that you can do well on the next examination. The other part of that intellectual health, boys and girls, is when you study, study hard, study hard. Don't just um, um, flippantly read through notes or whatnot and hope that miraculously you are going to come through and um, do well on your test. You know, the ones who are making the principals list, the ones who are making those top honors in the honor society and all boys and girls, guess what they are doing? They are listen, uh, listening attentively and they are studying hard. There's no magic about that. And boys and girls, sometimes we think that, ooh, that person is very, very smart. No, that person is doing what is necessary to become a part of the top 5%. Instead of doing what everybody else is doing, those are the individuals who are setting aside time to do what is necessary so that they can achieve ultimately in their academic world. That means, boys and girls, when you're listening, don't let no one else bother you. When you are working hard, studying hard, don't let no um, games or uh, electronic devices bother you, but focus, okay? You focus and you will become a part of the top five in your class. Just those two steps, listening atten attentively and studying hard, okay? Listening and studying, you will achieve. And boys and girls, that's the same that applies to our spiritual life. When it comes to our relationship with God, boys and girls, we need to listen. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit in us so that we can do the things that brings a smile upon the face of God. Amen. Not only do we want us to listen, but also to study. The Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what do we need to do, boys and girls? We need to listen to the word of God and study the word of God. But most importantly, boys and girls, obey the word of God. Once we listen to it, we study it, we understand it, that then we obey. And boys and girls, in our intellectual life, when it comes to out there in the world, in our school, we can become a part of the top five. And when it comes to our relationship with God, we can become a part of the top five by doing what? Listening, studying, obeying, and doing our very best. Now comes our emotional when it comes to our emotional well-being, boys and girls, there's so much that going on in our in our lives, hitting us left and right, causing us to worry and causing us to 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 be afraid. But that is not the will of God, boys and girls. God wants us to not worry, but be happy. He tells us in His Word. He said, "Be anxious or worry about nothing, but in everything pray about." With prayer of supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And God will give you a peace that transcends all understanding so that instead of worrying, stealing away your, your joy, your happiness, God will give you a peace so that you will be able to enjoy the rest of your life. Not worrying about what's going to happen, worrying about what's going to happen in the future, not worrying about what's going to happen tonight or, or, or what's going to happen um, five years from now. Put that stuff on the, in the hands of God. Give it to him. And in exchange for that, God will give you peace and allow you to be happy. So boys and girls, it's so important that we don't worry because worrying only, what it does is it chokes away our productivity. It chokes away our work at school. It chokes away our work when it comes to the kingdom of God and in the church. It just chokes away. That's what worry does. That's what fear does. And we don't need those boys and girls in our lives. So let's give them over to the Lord, over to the Lord so that we can actually live a healthy emotional life. Another thing that's important, boys and girls, when it comes to our emotional well, um, emotional life um, and this mental health is sharing our feelings. Sharing our feelings. Boys and girls, it's so important that we don't keep our feelings bottled up. Keep all of this stuff bottled up. It will destroy you. Talk to somebody. 
talk to someone, be it a professional, a psychologist, psychiatrist, or whomever, talk to your school counselor, talk to your mom, talk to your dad, talk to someone about those emotions that are in you, those sad emotions, those angry emotions, those fearful emotions, those resentful emotions, those bitter emotions, all of those emotions, boys and girls, that causes us to actually be um, to be um, opposite of what God purposed for us to be. People don't want to be around us when we have all of these emotions bottled up, because what happens is that if we got them bottled up, they're going to become so heavy that we're going to either lash out to someone and hurt them, or we're going to hurt ourselves. One of the two is going to happen. So what do we need to do? We need to share those feelings, share those emotions with others, boys and girls, so that they are off our chest. Get them off your chest so that you are free and you are free to do what God has called for you to do. Amen. Amen. So that is how we're going to maintain our mental health. Intellectually, we're going to listen attentively and study and emotionally we are going to not worry and share our feelings. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Hosea chapter four, verse 6a, it says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Boys and girls, those individuals who drop out of school, who don't care about academics or whatnot, who are not listening attentively and who is not studying hard, they find themselves living a hard life and walk in self-destruction. And also those individuals who don't study the word of God, don't know what the will of God is. They find themselves in messed up situations and self-destructive and do, uh, performing self-destructive behaviors. Boys and girls, don't be a part of such a group. Listen attentively and study hard, both at school and in the word of God. Amen. And then here's what the word says about it. Um, and I think I quoted earlier um, in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7 said, do not be anxious for anything. But that means do not be worried. Don't worry about anything. But in every, uh, every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request unto God. In other words, talk to someone. God wants us to talk to him, share our feelings with him. And what God would do in exchange, he said, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So that is the gist, boys and girls, of why we want to have this mental health. This mental health, boys and girls, is going to keep us from being destroyed. And then it's going to keep us from worrying and not doing the things that God has called and purpose for us to do. We are not free, boys and girls. We are not free when we don't know what is good, what is right, what is best. We don't have the lot knowledge. And we surely are not free when we are worried about everything, afraid of everything that's coming towards us left and right. So what do we want to do? We want to listen. We want to study. We want to not worry, and we want to share our feelings with others. We do those things, boys and girls, we're going to be all right. We are going to be all right. So, boys and girls, the gist of what we want to do is, like I said before, is uh, for us to become a part of the top five percenters. And to become a part of the top five percenters, both physically, socially, mentally, and spiritually, we must set goals. And the goal that we just talked about today for our mental well-being, boys and girls, the goal of achieving intellectually and achieving emotionally well-being and good health. Amen? Amen. And to do that, boys and girls, as we said before, just to re repeat, listen, study, don't worry, and share. If you do those things, boys and girls, you're going to have a good chance of have, being a part of the five percenters when it comes to your mental well-being. That's your mind. And boys and girls, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Don't waste it. Set a goal for mental health and go forward intellectually and emotionally to achieve that mental well-being. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, may God bless you. Until we meet again, 
Um, just put into practice what you've learned today and you will see yourself rising slowly but surely to that top 5%. Amen. Amen.